It's a bold move to say Google's going to lose in anything, but uh, what do you see going on with Booking, Expedia, and some of the others here? Yeah, sure. Good afternoon, and, and, and thank you very much for, for having me on your show. I, I think the crucial thing to consider is uh, the areas of focus that the market that the market has is what can AI bring in terms of disintermediating, you know, consumers and disintermediating coders, disintermediating lawyers, drive-through assistants at Wendy's, and also OTAs. Um, but you need you need to think about the starting point for that, and that is that the top of the funnel right now is a very, very, very consolidated industry that is dominated by Google. And if you're the only shop in town, then you can charge what you want. And, and the consequence of that is that the OTAs pay a huge amount of money to buy traffic from them. Right. They, uh, reading your note, you were saying basically the likes of Expedia and Booking are perhaps one of Google's biggest revenue sources, which is just incredible to think about. The, the thing I'd like to, to zero in on as well is this idea that Google won't be the only gateway to the Internet. What if it is? You know, what if it's able to maintain that leadership position? Um, would that undermine the, the ability for others to do better? Sure, that, that's a great question. And, and I think that's something that, that everyone is thinking about. I guess going back to that starting point, right now, Google is upwards of 90% share of search in a, in a huge amount of markets. And they obviously were a tremendously successful in the, era of search, in the era of search that we're currently in. Going into the next era of search, what's to say that they're going to have over 90% of some of those countries again? It, it could be the same. In all probability, it's going to be lower. Um, you have a great level of progress, as you've already been touching on on your show, about OpenAI, ChatGPT, all source, open AI, um, open source AI driving progress. And you know we're seeing consumer-facing programs sitting on top of that that are trying to get um, eyeballs from consumers and try to, try to be the first place that the consumer goes to search for something. And if at the margin that reduces the level of share that Google has, and that creates different environments where these guys that control the content, and that is key, if they find different environments where they can buy traffic from, then that's beneficial. The more places there are to buy traffic from, the less you're going to have to pay. Right. And with this comes, Steve, in a moment when OpenAI has just announced ChatGPT is coming to the App Store, which is... It's there now. I just downloaded is it. it. Did you yeah. already get it? It's right here, yeah. So if you can talk with that and say, hey, I'd like to book a trip, you know, exa exactly. however exactly this is going to happen. Google, and this is, I think, a great point Alex makes, Google tried and kind of backed away from being in the travel business right. itself. So Because antitrust concerns, let's it, be honest. Right. Yeah. So now has that opened the way? I mean, will they have to try to get back in there somehow? Or, or how's this going to play this out? This really reminded me, and I think Alex made a really good point in his report, was it reminded me of Amazon because we see so much, ad, so many ad dollars shifting over to Amazon as people realize, why should I search in Google for the product I want? I'll just go to Amazon exactly. and do it. And it, we know how Amazon's ad business is doing. I can see that translating here as well. And, and But in addition, we should also note Google's thinking about this, and our own Jen Elias on CNBC.com reported yesterday, they're already thinking about how to integrate this AI into their ads to make ads better and more effective. For example, doing similar to what uh, Facebook announced, using generative AI to help uh, smaller companies who don't necessarily have the capability to make these ads to just do it with Gen AI. Alex, maybe the question for investors would be, do you watch for headlines like Expedia or Booking developing its own chat app? Or do you simply watch for headlines about ChatGPT's app and think, okay, that becomes the portal by which these companies can benefit? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And look, you're talking about, about the, the potential for Google. The bit that we obviously don't major on so much in the report is the other side of the debate, which is can Google monetize other pieces of the industry that aren't in search? So mm -hmm. I wouldn't go so far as to be tremendously negative on Google because there are other pieces outside of search that they could lean on to generate greater revenues to offset some of some of that lost search. To your point, you know, Google and Expedia are developing their own in-house functions. You mentioned Sam Altman on your show earlier. He is on the board of Expedia. They've got a lot of work that they're doing internally oh, wow. to help to connect consumers to themselves and to help to get more direct traffic. And that's that's hugely important. I think for the time being, it's it's kind of beta stage and it's it's a little bit of a gimmick to an extent. I say I still think that the biggest focus is, you know. Can you enable the traffic that you buy to be more profitable? Right now, as you know, Booking.com is spending as much as its entire EBITDA acquiring traffic. Wow! And that traffic is hugely, hugely accretive. And, and to Google, on my estimates, I think Google's making around one dollar twenty for a click that Booking is paying for. Wow. Now, if you had ten different places to buy that traffic from, if you imagine, you know, Microsoft Copilot could get you straight to Booking.com then maybe the cost of that is you know, significantly lower. I make a point in my note, which 
was an interesting parallel from one of my colleagues who said that if you look at you know, the generic drug industry, when generic drugs go off patent over the next 10 years, prices fall by 70 to 80%. And there's kind of a parallel there because you've got a monopoly product that's suddenly not a monopoly and huh. the price falls tremendously. So I think that, you know, it's, it's obviously difficult to draw, draw direct lines between industries. But for me, that's, that's kind of an interesting one.